Hi, Weekly Roundup number 35 looks at robotic boards, NAS kits, some new APIs, wireless SPCs, a bunch of cans, and a few things on sale at the moment. Before I get into it, I've been thinking of making this Roundup something that happens every two weeks, and running a mailbag segment every alternate week and giving all my subs and patrons a chance to vote either way. So stay tuned at the end of this video where a YouTube poll will appear. Hopefully, I think. So first up on Kickstarter, there's a stepper motor driver capable of pushing out six amps at 48 volts. Coming in at $50 US, it seems to be a decent board, but it hasn't attracted much interest. The Omslo One is an Arduino clone running an Atmega 328P, but with a built-in CAN bus. Runs off 12 to 24 volts DC supply. They also have an Omslo USB controller based on an Atmega 32U4. Both these boards can be powered directly from the RJ45 connector in a similar way to PoE. While the Helios 4's claim of world's first open source NAS is a little ambitious, they do have something that is probably the first complete NAS product based on the ARM architecture. It contains a dual core Cortex A9 Marvel Armada 388 SOC running at 1.8 GHz, 2 gigs DDR3 RAM, SD slot, a bunch of GPIOs, gigabit Ethernet, 4 SATA 3.0 ports, and 2 USB 3.0 ports. It runs Ambien, Open MediaVault, and SynCloud. Looks like a great NAS box, despite being based on a RISC CPU. Over at DF Robot, they have launched their Boson Kit, which provides a bunch of modules that are LEGO compatible. Built around an Intel Curie, it is also micro-bit compatible. And they also provide other modules such as logic gates, sensors, cameras, buttons, everything that you'd need. DF Robot claim that you can create cool stuff without coding, which is great for getting into electronics, but of course you can also code in C. Circuit Scribe is conductive ink, which is really cool stuff. Just draw your PCB circuits out and away you go. I wonder what the resistance per centimeter is like though. The Hedgehog is another product aimed at STEM education for robotics. Based on the Pi 3 with an STM32 MCU, servo, stepper and DC motor drivers and all the software pre-installed on an SD giving you programming options in either Blockly, JavaScript, C or plain old Python. If you're into cosplay, this PCB is designed specifically for adding light and sound to your costume. Contains a SAMD21, SD slot, 2.5 watt audio amplifier, and MOSFETs driving up to 3.0 watt LEDs. And nothing interesting on Indiegogo or CrowdSupply this week. However, NVIDIA have announced a robot virtual simulator called Isaac. It allows you to train up your AI-based robot using simulated scenarios, and then transfer this to a physical robot. It has been built up from Epic Games' Unreal Engine 4 and provides some essential deep learning capabilities that would take a long time to do on a physical robot. Julia is another general purpose high level language that is aimed at complex mathematical problems. It provides extensive maths libraries such as signal processing, linear algebra and Perl-like string processing. Well this has now finally been ported to the Pi and you can pick it up from your nearest Debian repository. Sphera Labs have launched the Strato Pi Can and is a Pi hat that provides an electrically isolated RS485 and CAN bus. Coming in at $100 US just for the hat or $250 US for a complete DIN rail unit. Looks like a good option for home automation. Realtek are now producing a newer version of their Wi-Fi module called the Amoeba Z series, which uses an ARM Cortex M4 core rather than a Cortex M3 of the previous modules. This is a direct competitor to the Espressif ESP32s and contains all the usual complement of GPIO options. There are now several of these appearing on PCBs around the place. While we're on these Realtek chips, Rack Wireless now have an Arduino compatible board using an RTL8711AM module called the Rack 473. It contains 64 megabyte SPI flash, USB and JTAG, all powered from a micro USB port. Friendly Alec have now released version 1.2 of their NAS box for the Nano Pi Neo. What's the difference? It's now using a newer USB 3.0 to SATA bridge chip from JMicron, which supposedly has faster throughput than the previous SATA bridge. Back in an earlier weekly roundup, I predicted the next evolution of Maker Electronic products being FPGAs. 
Trends Electronic now have a Pi form factor board, contains one of the Xilinx Zinc Z7010 system on module, which is a dual core Cortex A9 at 866MHz, with a 28,000 Logic Cell FPGA, up to 512 MB DDR3 RAM, 16 MB SPI flash, and all the same I.O. options as present on the Pi 3. It actually looks just like another revision of the Pi, but so much better. Bring on the complex finite state machines. While looking for a decent TV box that you could hack apart, I came across a sale that's on at the moment of the Geekbox. For $70 US, you can pick up a fully hackable SBC with an RK3368 octa-core SOC, 2GB DDR3 RAM, 16GB flash, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Gigabit Ethernet, and HDMI 2.0. This has a lot. And for an extra $10 US, you can get a dock that breaks out all the GPIOs coming from the SOC. This is pretty cool, and the cheapest functional 8-core SPC I've seen around. Tindy is a bit quiet this week again, but if you're in need of powering up a long LED strip or DC motor, this small board will drive a 5 amp 100 volt load. Useful if you want a quick way to drive some heavy loads. Now this is an odd one, it's a piezo based micro air blower capable of pushing out 2 kilopascals of air silently. Why would you want one? I don't know, but it sounds really cool. And here's another all-in-one sensor unit powered by an 18650 battery. Runs an ESP8266 and Atmega328 to monitor battery levels and measures temperature and humidity. This one is a small board containing an ESP32, OLED, LiPo battery management and I2S audio output. The creator has already implemented a small internet radio on this. Looks cool. Over at Mouser, they have a dev board based on the PIC32 MX470. This one contains a PIC32 MCU, two microbus sockets, X32 header for audio I.O., Bluetooth buttons, LEDs, and a bunch of GPIOs from the PIC chip. Also, DigiKey have an Intel dual-based click shield with an onboard 4-channel 12-bit ADC capable of 10 kilo samples per second and running off a 3.3 to 5 volt supply. Over at IT, they have a newer version of their 4-channel sign-off. This one with onboard RF as well as the usual ESP8266 Wi-Fi and has a bunch of control modes that are programmed via their web interface. Or you could just roll your own firmware and reflash. See it have a particle power shield available as pre-order allowing you to power your particle via LiPo, USB or solar cell using the MCP73871 battery management chip. And they also have this particle photon kit on pre-order and a particle internet button with 3 DOF IMU, 4 buttons and a bunch of RGB LEDs to give you a nice wall mounted control thingy. Seed also have the OpenMV Cam M7 on back order at the moment, which is a really cool vision analytics board that's capable of facial recognition, object tracking, eye tracking, optical flow and a bunch of other cool things. Runs a Cortex M7 MCU, capable of analysing a 640x480 grayscale video stream. Has 5V tolerant GPIOs. If you don't want to wait for the Seed Studios back order, you can also pick it up from SparkFun. SparkFun also have a new particle sensor capable of detecting 2.5 and 10 micron particles. That's pretty tiny. Powered by 5V, but runs a 3.3V serial UART. So be careful about voltages on this one. They also have a newer version of the SparkFun Inventors Kit, with a few changes to the usual lineup. Over at Adafruit, there's an Esprino Wi-Fi, which is an ESP8266 based board that also contains an STM32 pre-programmed with Esprino. So you can start coding up using JavaScript in no time. You have access to the usual complement of 21 GPIOs and powered from 5 volts. They claim a current draw of under 50 nanoamps in sleep mode providing up to 2.5 years life on a 2.5 amp hour battery. Over at Pololo, they have a new Pancake Bipolar Stepper Motor with inbuilt encoder capable of 200 steps per revolution, running off 3.5 volts at 1 amps per phase, so you need up to 2 amps to drive this thing. And they have a bunch of flexible RGB LED panels in various sizes from 16x16 16 16 to 8x8 to 8x32. All of them are based on the SK9822 LED drivers, which are similar to the old APA102s, but are different enough to require some modification of your code. Meanwhile, over in China, there's not much happening either. Banggood have a bunch of cheap ESP8266 based Arduino compatible boards with a wide range 9 to 24 volt DC input. 
and this board seems to have everything but the kitchen sink. It's a Bluetooth audio board with stereo 6 watt amplifier and LiPo battery management. Odd combination, but just might be the thing. If you have a bunch of old monitors lying around like I do, then you can convert them to a TV unit with one of these. Capable of up to 1080p resolution and has composite VGA and antenna inputs, the odd thing is that it mentions you can reflash the board using USB. Hmm, I might get one of these and play around with it. And Banggood have an ample supply of low noise RF amplifiers in stock. This one operating in a 50 MHz to 4 GHz frequency range. And I wouldn't mind getting one of these as they're fairly cheap at the moment. It's a replacement screen for a Kindle 3. There's plenty of people retrofitting Pi Zeros to these, so it might be a good project to do. Over at IC Station, there's a really cheap 2 inch TFT display using the ILI 9225 driver. Man, that's really cheap. And an NRF 24L01 module with an onboard LNA. They claim up to 2.5km transmission distance at 100mW power output. Over at DX, I saw a cheap 2 inch e ink display for the Pi. It can fit into any Pi, but it fits neatly onto the Zero. Hmm, might pick up one of these too. So why do I want to change this roundup to every two weeks? Well, there's two reasons for this. One, sometimes there's not much mm. happening, and it'd be good to showcase stuff that's really good, as opposed to scraping the bottom of the barrel sometimes. Two, the stuff I purchase from these weekly roundups, I like to run quick reviews and small tutorials on, and if there's enough interest, run my usual in-depth reviews. Three, I have tons of projects planned from quick weekend ones to month-long ones, and this will give me more time to work on these. On the alternate weeks, I'll run a new video series that'll cover small tutorials or projects based on stuff that's come in mailbags or run a live session here and there. I'll also take feedback from previous episodes, so if you want me to try something out, I can. So any second now, a little box will appear just up here. When you click on it, it'll give you the option to vote on whether I change to every two weeks or not. I'll post a separate poll for my patrons who have been an incredible support to me and this channel. So go ahead, uh, vote, and uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. See you next week.